today we are being joined by Mr. Todd Russo, owner of Rias Air Conditioning, to talk about uh, something that's kind of kind of new and late breaking news. That and I, I, I actually called Todd yesterday. I said, "Now, Todd, you've been on several times, and it's always a very easy conversation. And I I, I give Todd a lot of credit for things he's taught me about the building industry." And whole house energy audits. But I said, Todd, tomorrow, which is today, today's conversation is going to be the toughest one we've ever had on air. Yeah, it's uh, usually it's just informative. This one obviously is informative, too, but it, it could definitely go. Uh, you can see how maybe some uh, more money driven players in the industry might use this uh, to try to leverage for people to force them to purchase things. Well, if you can learn from history. We've been through this once before. <laughs> yeah, and that's the third it. time. And that's exactly what happened. <laughs> this is, uh, so I started the business in 2009. I think this is my fifth time we're going through some sort of major EPA change. Wow. Yeah. Talk a little bit about, so the air conditioning industry na- glo- nationally, globally, is about ready to go through a pretty significant change. It's so significant that every manufacturer is stopping their assembly lines. Yeah. That's yeah. significant. So a few years back, uh, they, they're doing this for climate reasons. The Environmental Protection Agency created some new laws. It's an international law where they're phasing out 410A refrigerant. 410A has a higher- Homeowners may know that. It's a Freon. Oh, yeah. It's, 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 it's the refrigerant inside their air conditioning yeah. unit, right? Uh, in 2010, they de- decommissioned R22. And, uh, and that's because it was causing a black hole in the atmosphere? Uh, it it was <laughs> it's what they <laughs> yeah it has no, what they call it that, that was it right that, the, it has hydrochloral for I'm, I'm, I'm mispronouncing hydrochloral chlorides and that again I mispronounced it again a second time uh, it has a global warming potential that is much higher meaning okay. that it, the gas is very destructive to the ozone uh, I'm not a chemist so yeah. that's probably not my expertise but that was the motivation that caused the change in 2010 yes. And a few years back, they made they elected to make the same change this year. So in 2025, you can no longer put 410A refrigerant equipment in. Which was introduced as the answer 13 years ago. 13 years ago, (laughs) what they did is they effectively blended R22 with another refrigerant to create 410A. So 410A is just a blend of R22 and 125, which they effectively reduced, uh, you know, the negative impacts to the environment with that refrigerant. Uh, the challenge being it was a blend, and so it's less effective than R22. Uh, and now they're moving to lower GWP refrigerants. And what's GWP? Global warming potential. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, yeah. I Look, I'm not I mean, this, I'm not a, here. this is a national mandate. This, this, it's an international this, mandate. Europe's it's an international well. mandate. Yeah, okay. Europe's doing it as well. Uh, and so, effectively, all the 410A equipment is no longer allowed to be manufactured in 2025. Uh, so at the end of this year, you can still install it through 2025. Uh, at 2026, you can no longer do it. That's for residential and like, commercial product. And when you said Europe's doing it as well, I, I've got a sister that lives there. They don't have an air conditioning where they're at. But if it's a heat pump, this is still the same liquid that you need to yeah. for a heater. A heat pump is just an air conditioning that runs both directions. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, so Europe's doing the same change. So we're seeing it globally. We're seeing the shift away from these refrigerants. So What, what does that mean for the homeowner? And, and what what could they possibly be exposed to over the next six months that well that we got to protect them from? <laughs> Here's the interesting dilemma we're in, and we started seeing this this summer. So the manufacturers are required to retool their plants for their new lines for their new refrigerant product. Okay. There's some new requirements related to those new refrigerant project uh, products. Uh, the refrigerant itself, which are their A2L refrigerants, which basically means they Part of what it means is, you know, they have a mild flammability aspect to them. And so now we're adding safety sensors and that sort of thing. Okay. So this summer, we actually saw a very significant shortage in air handlers because they started turning over their air handler lines sooner than their condenser lines. Oh. Because the air handler lines actually have some of these indoor sensors that protect the homeowner from from the refrigerant leaks. So we had a a really tough time the last few months uh, sourcing... Uh, air handlers. Luckily, we had a significant amount of inventory because we saw the, the pattern coming. Uh, and now they are working on converging, converting over their package unit lines and their condenser lines. And so literally this week, we got emails saying, you have to get your orders in by Friday if you want this equipment. Oh. So 
that it's sort of tongue in cheek. I think they're you know sending the email yeah. to make it more exaggerated than it needs to be. Okay, uh, but we will see over the next few months real challenges with equipment availability. Um, as they're moving lines away from their old equipment into their new equipment. The manufacturers also don't want to get stuck with dead inventory that they can't sell next year. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, it's a real, it's a real <laughs> yeah. catch-22. Yeah, so they can't sell it next year. So the last thing they want to get stuck with is a bunch of equipment they're legally not allowed to sell. So are they like incentivizing it and offering it for cheap to get it moved out the door? Or are they jacking up the price? And they're effectively – the emails say, this is your last chance to get – 410A equipment at these prices, and the new equipment is going to be 10 to 12% higher. So if you want to stock up on the less expensive equipment for the older refrigerant, you can. Uh, that's kind of the dialogue. So, But then you're stuck with the equipment. If you Like if I installed it now, how long am I going to be able to service that R10 unit? So this is where the fear mongering kind of concerns me. Um, you know, look, we, we service R22 units still. Uh, they don't make R22 anymore. It's a challenge to get. If you have a refrigerant leak in an R22 unit from 2008 or whatever, you're not fixing it. You're replacing it, right? But if you have a 2008 unit that's 16 years old and you have a refrigerant leak, it's probably time to replace that unit anyway. Um, so they, they are starting to mandate reduction in the production of the refrigerant itself. So in 2022, we saw a 10% reduction in the aggregate production, a mandated 10% reduction in the ag aggregate production of the refrigerant. And that's going to continue over the next five to 10 years where they're going to push the reduction in the in the refrigerant every year. Uh, I think in 20, this year, at the end of this year, they're taking it to 60% of 2022 levels. So imagine there's an aggregate amount of refrigerant that's produced in the United States in 2022. Today, it's we're only allowed to produce 90% of it. 2025, we're only allowed to produce 60% of it. And then it's going to further decrease in 2029, which seems like a long ways off, but in a couple of months will be in 2025. So that's four wow. years from now. So in 2029, they're only allowed to produce 30% of the aggregate amount of refrigerant we have. That's the way they're phasing it out. So, you know, here's where I, I, I get a little concerned about the industry because the industry's had so many changes the last few years. And yes. We, we have so many of the air conditioning companies in Phoenix and, and other markets that are owned by private equity firms. They're owned by these big banks. Yes. And so, uh, you know. And a lot of that has happened within the last three years. Three years, yeah. I would say, I, candidly, I can only think of two competitors of mine that aren't owned by a large bank at this point. Um, I would say I know 60 or 70 transactions. I would say I used to get one to two phone calls a week trying to buy the company. Yeah, uh, I bet, I bet yeah. you do. <laughs> <laughs> Slow down a little bit. Uh, so, you know, there's a those companies tend to be driven strictly by – Profit and loss and balance sheet. They're less about customer relations because their ultimate goal is to turn them in five years. So That's they just it. want to see big numbers on the balance sheet and the profit loss. And so there is a major drive to incentivize sales. And so I can see how this dialogue will come about. Hey, you have Fortune A equipment. You got to change it. I don't buy into it, right? Okay. I have Fortune A equipment in my house. I'm not concerned about it for the next. Well, obviously, I own an air conditioning company. So it's a little easier. <laughs> <laughs> if I didn't own an air conditioning, I wouldn't be concerned about it. Uh, I will say that over time, if you do get into refrigerant-related repairs, it will become more expensive to repair. Uh, but refrigerant is only one component of the system. Yeah. Right? Um, so, I guess... The scariest thing I've heard is they're going to reduce production of it by 40%, 60%. Yeah. So, if you look at... So, 410A has gone up. They reduced it by 10%, right? So, the demand for air conditioning went up significantly the last few years as everybody was in their home, right? Yeah, so, everybody yeah, buying sure. air conditioning. Yeah. There was this pull forward momentum that there was a lot more air conditioning units replaced the last three years than there were the previous three years. Okay. You know, if you're in your home all the time, you're going to care about how your air conditioning performs because you want to be comfortable. Sure. Right? So, we saw a huge demand spike in air conditioning replacements okay. the last few years. And then we saw a reduction in the supply mandated government mandated right so there's more there's a, a much larger need for the refrigerant and there's less production right so yeah. we saw 375 percent price increase in the last wait, two wait, or three wait, years wait, say that again <laughs> so, say that again. <laughs> in what? the last in the last three years we've seen a 375 percent price increase on refrigerant 410a um and so it, it's gotten more expensive like right now our maintenance offerings we offer a pound of refrigerant for free, like minor adjustments, yes. if it's needed in the system. I don't think we're going to be able to offer that as a free service next year as part of our maintenance. We're probably going to have to make that an all car price because it's just going to get too expensive. Rosie, Rosie on the house, every Arizona homeowner 